In the last walkthrough, we finished off Act 3 and were sucked into Cold Harbor, Molag Ball's realm of oblivion. We met Inquisitor Pepe, a sleeper who seems to greet many people here in the Math of Molatu Priory. Before we head out into Cold Harbor, there's a few things of importance we should go over. Right here beside our coffin, we can find a note from a slave trader. Pepe mentions this guy to us when we speak to him. These notes can be found all over Cold Harbor and are pretty cool to collect in general, so make sure to keep an eye out for them. Who knows, maybe one day we'll find this slave trader. To our left and our right, we can find two coffins. Both act as a player's storage, so here you can store all of your spoils you'll obtain in the realm. Take some time to sort out your inventory. You may have noticed something. You have a new item called the Eye of Maruk. If you don't have one in your inventory, you can find one inside the statue behind the book on the pedestal. If you activate the eye from your inventory, it will allow you to see how much karma you have. I'll tell you this right now, karma will determine two things, what people will become your followers and what ending you will get to vigilant. It's very important to keep track of your karma, so keep this on you at all times. Now, if you click the button trace on, you will obtain several quest markers leading to what we're going to call dreams. Dreams will help us gain karma and determine what endings we can get, so doing these are pretty important. Now, the other two things you can track, Pius and Radiance, were recently added with Vigilant 1.6.2. As of right now, I have a vague idea of what these do, but I will go over them in a later video. Many books are scattered inside this location, so if you're interested on what the heck is going on here, go ahead and read some of them. I think the lore here is very interesting, but it can be pretty dark, so be prepared. One book, however, this one on the bench, is actually a spell tome. Using this spell will allow us to conjure an ancient flame spirit. Now, I'm going to showcase all loot and items we will obtain from this video at the end, so check the description for the timestamp on that. Behind this big statue here, we can find an item called Solus Remains. It may say Ruin of the Solus one in the video, but it should be called Solus Remains for you. Throughout Vigilant, we will find many items like this. Bones of Junhol, Dragon Soul Stones, and a few more items if you will. They all act as a consumable and are located in your potion inventory. This item here will increase our karma by one point when we use it. These sorts of items will have a display in the Dragonborn Museum, so make sure to save one of each to display. For now, we're done in here. Let's go on and head outside to Cold Harbor. The first thing you should notice, this does not look like Cold Harbor at all. I imagine you expected pink and purple, well, there is some lore actually behind why the place looks like a deserted wasteland. Anyways, if you don't like the atmosphere, there is a way to change this. Go ahead and follow me. Here at the Shrine of Kine, we can activate a shrine that allows us to change the weather into three different looks. Right now, we are on the Dusk look. You can change it to Grey March, Dark, or Dawn if you wanted to. I also want to point out that depending on what part of the main quest or story you are on, the weather will change automatically, so if you don't like one of these looks, you can come back here to change it. I'm personally going to stick with the dusk look as I think it looks really cool. These main quest guides are going to be pretty straightforward, as I won't go over the side quests because those will have their own videos. I will go over what is necessary to finish the act and get back to Skyrim. I also won't go over every single chest to loot, as that's something I feel would be fun to do on your own. Now that I think about it, this quest really doesn't guide anyone at all. It's mostly all up to you to figure out what to do, and some people don't like that. That's one of the reasons why I like to make video guides. 
Now, one of the more recent updates to Vigilant added food to the enemies you will fight in the wasteland, so if you have survival mods, you pretty much can't die here. Now that I've showcased the shrine, follow me to head to the waterfront district, the place we need to go to advance the main quest. As you guys may have seen already, many enemies you will come across here in the wasteland are old members of the Elysian Order. The Order plays a huge part into the lore and story of Vigilant. Here we meet an NPC named Martha. You don't really have to talk to her as she is one of the side quests. Before we head into the waterfront district, head into this watchtower to the left. Trust me, you need to anyways. Here we need to find the key from the captain so we can enter the district's fort and defeat the leader to advance. Now I mentioned a captain, and the captain, well, it's a scamp. Be gone, swine, or should I tear you apart? You really only have the option to kill him, so just do it. Be gone, swine. Or should I tear you apart? Now once you defeat him, you can loot his body, and loot the only thing of importance, which is the key to Fort Varen. That's all we have to do up here, so let's go ahead and head back down to the Waterfront District. For the Waterfront District, there's a good amount to do here. You can meet some old friends, buy and sell a few items, and rescue a bard imprisoned by the slave trader. We also have the option to talk to Sir Junkin, the gatekeeper over here, who will give us more information on a few things around the district. I noticed during my footage I do a lot of sightseeing, as this is one of my favorite settings in any Skyrim mod for some reason, and I don't know why. Newcomer, you're so full of life. We don't need to talk to him to advance the quest, however. We need to enter this fort right here and take out the leader so we can get the key to open the gate. This place is a pretty straightforward dungeon, so most of it will be sped up. I'll slow it back down again when we come across something important. Before I speed things up, look over to your right to find another forbidden spell tome. This one is called Hovering Firefly. Like I said earlier, I will showcase all of this loot at the end of the video. Here we come across two doors. Heading left will lead us to a dining area and a few hostile scamps. Take them out. This dining area has a unique food item called Unthrapa. It has a display in the Dragonborn Museum. All it really does is increase your health by a small amount. We find multiple Unthrapas throughout the uh, Cold Harbor realm, so don't worry if you accidentally eat one. There's another one right here, of course, and we'll find more later. Be sure to look around for any interesting loot, any interesting books, or chests, as there actually is one to our left. These chests, or coffins, can get you some good loot, but like I mentioned earlier, it may be up to you guys to find certain ones. I'm not going to showcase every one. This door straight ahead won't lead us to anything significant other than a few bone crawler enemies and a lore book. Let's head this way. In the fort you may come across scamp archers. Make sure to loot them as they have a chance to give you Daedric arrows. Now up here to our left we can find a door. In this room we come across an Elysian priest and another forbidden spell tome. These forbidden tomes all have really cool and unique spells, so I suggest trying each one out and seeing if they can fit your playstyle. Now let's head back on the normal route.
This area to our right doesn't lead anywhere significant. Head straight. Here we're about to come across a big room with many enemies. I had to turn on god mode here as the enemies in groups can do good amounts of damage to you. And I couldn't use my uh, conjuration spell. So, yeah. Now it got pretty chaotic here and a book flew across onto the stairs. I just wanted to tell you guys this as the book isn't originally here. It's in front of this big statue area. Speaking of the statue, in front of it lays a pedestal and another one of the soulless remains. For every consumable item that Vigilant adds like this one, I will have a separate guide showcasing every single location to find them at, so expect one for soulless remains as well. We are now approaching the throne room to our left here, and this is where the fort leader resides. I'd suggest making a save before you fight Vernakis? Welcome, Vigilant of Stendar. Once again, my name is Vernakis. Yes, he is the leader of the fort. Here we must finish him once and for all if we want to advance. Vernakis is very quick and likes to use flames to his advantage. He has a chance to gain a fire aura that will deal damage to anyone in its proximity. He also has a chance to teleport randomly to a location. These attacks itself can be deadly, but on top of that, Vernakis uses a two-handed weapon and he can swing it pretty quick. Once you finally defeat him, you will immediately gain a key to the waterfront district gate. You will also gain karma. Let's go ahead and loot his body. The first thing we can find is Borlor's bow. This bow we can use for ourselves, but we can turn it into Borlor, an NPC in the Waterfront District. However, that is a side quest, and I will go over that in a later video. We also have a Daedra heart, some gold, and a ring called Orky's Flame Clutch. I will showcase this ring along with all the other loot we get at the end of the video. We also have a piece of bow, Vernacus, which allows us to summon Vernacus using Conjuration. Then we have a few potions, a scroll, and a book named Vernacus and Borlor. This will give you a little of a lore and a little story about Vernacus and Borlor themselves and their feud, so I th I'd give it a read. I think it's a really interesting book. We are now clear to head back to the waterfront district, but first let me show you guys how to get some extra loot. This gap right here will lead us down here. You will take a little bit of fall damage, but don't worry, it won't kill you. Here we can find a locked coffin with boss chest loot inside, a forbidden tome named Firefly, an old Histus flask, and a bone of Junehole. This bone is another one of those consumable items that will increase a certain stat when you consume it. This one happens to increase Magicka by 10 points. These coffins with this sort of lid should contain boss loot, so I'd definitely be on the lookout for these. When you're done here, jump into the water below. We are now cleared to head out to the waterfront district and open up the gate. Now here's something I find kinda cool. If we speak to Sir Junkin after defeating Vernakis, he will say this. So, you defeated Vernakis. Well, you're stronger than you look. With the key we obtained from Vernakis, we can now open up this gate. Prepare yourself as we are about to fight a flying Dejroth. I suggest making a save before you get anywhere near him. Borlor's bow has a really cool weapon art named Rapid Fire. I will showcase it during the fight against Mentana, which is the Flying Worm. Now the first enemies we'll come across out here are Scorpions, so be sure to take those out so they don't bug you during a fight. As you can already see up there, you can probably see the Worm that we're going to fight here soon. Now whenever you walk up close to it, that's when the Worm will become hostile.
You guys should respect this snipe. Watch it. This is pretty dope. You should treat the men to not fight like one against the dragon. Hide behind cover before he fires his deadly spells at you. He can fire a slow ball of flame towards you or an earthen spike that can do good amounts of damage. As you see here, I'm making good use of the bow we obtained from the fort and it's making good work of this foul worm. The weapon art rapid fire just does what it says, it allows you to fire quickly and do good amounts of damage. As soon as you finish off the worm, you will gain a sticky key. You will also gain karma. The key will unlock the gate ahead of us. You will also notice that Pepe is spawned right near the gate. Now, let's loot Menta Na. Here we have Altano's remains. Sir Junkin was telling us about a Vigilant who tried to fight the worm before us, so this clears up that the Vigilant was Altano. We also have a Dragon Soul Stone, which guarantee one dragon soul when consumed. We have Altano's Blade of Choice here in Cold Harbor, the Ebony Blade of Mercy. We also have his Vigilant Armor we can take. And then we have the pieces of ball that allow us to summon Menta Na and Vigilant Altano. Head on up to this gate which is dubbed Varla's Gate. Here we can speak to Pepe who is by far my favorite voiced NPC in this mod. Thank you for killing the worm. I can finally enjoy my wash again. He will give you more information on how to get inside the Imperial City, and what the area is that we're about to enter. Using the sticky key we can open this gate and enter Varla's territory. Here Sir Junkin is also watching us. And you also defeated the worm. Seems I was mistaken about you. If you want to talk to Sir Junkin, go right ahead. Here we can read a monument about Varla. Hover over this Dibella statue and we can actually open it up. Inside we will find a healing potion and a note from Sir Gregory. You will be able to find multiple Dibella statues across Cold Harbor so be on the lookout for these. All of them have a healing potion and helpful tips from Sir Gregory himself. I'm going to end the first main quest walkthrough here. In the next episode I'll show you guys the two paths you can take to reach the sewers that will lead us to the Imperial City. I'm going to head into showcasing all of the cool loot we got from today's episode, so I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and as always, peace out. Borlor's bow has no unique enchantments, however it does have a unique weapon art that I showcased earlier called Rapid Fire. As you guys could have guessed by now, it does as the title says. The bow has a really cool look and it reminds me a little bit of Ruin's Edge. Orky's Flame Clutch Ring is a clear reference to the Dark Souls ring named Fire Clutch Ring. 
The enchantment allows fire spells to do 50% more damage and you will overall do 15% more damage when equipped. This ring is really cool and useful to a fire mage. The Ebony Blade of Mercy is identical to the Blade of Mercy, however this one is an Ebony variant and I think this one does more damage, I'm not quite sure. It allows you to deal more damage to an undead when using. 